Close your eyes, watch your breath. And any thoughts that would come in to tell you, go someplace else, you can just put them aside. You're working on a higher pleasure here. Most of the pleasures we have in the world are sensual pleasures, having to do with the pleasures of sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, ideas. But we're looking for something higher. This is called the pleasure of form, as you inhabit the body from within. What's good about this pleasure is that it doesn't require that things outside have to be just so. It requires a certain amount of peace in the environment, although when you get really good at the concentration you can get them unquiet in any environment. But it doesn't place any burdens on anybody else, and it's not the sort of thing that anybody else can take away from you, and it poses no dangers. Some of the pleasures we look for in the world outside are, are pretty dangerous. We have to realize that some pleasures have to be put aside if you want something of higher worth. As the Buddha said, it's one of the basic principles of wisdom. When you see that there's a greater pleasure that comes from putting aside or abandoning a lesser pleasure, the wise person abandons the lesser pleasure for the sake of the greater one. It's a verse in the Dhammapada. There was a British scholar who translated the Dhammapada, and he got to this verse, and he put a footnote. He said, this couldn't possibly be the meaning of this verse. The terms must mean something else. Because he said, everybody knows that you have to sacrifice lesser pleasures for the sake of greater ones. Well, people may know that, but how many people actually live in line with that? And because people don't like this idea, they live as if they didn't know. But we have to realize that life is like a garden. You can plant different plants in the garden, but there are some plants that will kill the other plants. So if you like roses and you like lilies, but you also like eucalyptus, watch out. The eucalyptus will kill the roses and the lilies. So you have to decide which one you want, which one gives the greater pleasure. And then you're willing to put aside the lesser pleasures for the sake of the greater one. That's how we bring intelligence to issues of happiness. Happiness is an area where we tend to be pretty foolish. Something strikes our fancy and we go for it. There's a book that came out a while back called The Intelligent Heart. It was about Buddhism. And that's precisely what the Buddha teaches. You're intelligent not only in your mind, but also in your heart. You look at the things that you want and you have to get some order to the things that you want. And you learn how to make yourself desire things that are going to lead to long-term happiness, and learn how not to desire things that will lead to short-term happiness but long-term pain. So we're trying to bring intelligence to the issues of the heart, the happiness we want, the things that we will in life. And that way the mind and the heart become an entirety. The Pali term for mind in but actually, there are two terms, jitta and mano, and both of them have that double meaning, both heart and mind. Whereas we in the West tend to separate the two. It's good that we bring them back together, so we can be wise in the happiness we look for, and we can use our wisdom for genuine well-being. 